Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today. The Thunder may not see Chet Holmgren on the court this year. Why are we overlooking the Las Vegas Raiders as a playoff team? After all, they they did go to the playoffs last year. And there's a scenario in which the Miami Hurricanes win the ACC in football. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't-miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. Yeah, it might be NFL season, but it wasn't that long ago that the NBA landscape was hype over Chet Holmgren. Now some bad news for Oklahoma City Thunder fans. Chet apparently injured his foot in a Pro-Am game. We've seen a lot of these guys at Pro-Am games lately. LeBron James out at the Drew. Chet now has apparently some questions about whether or not there is ligament damage. He's going to have some imaging to confirm the severity of this injury. Ryland Stiles from Locked on Thunder joins me now. And and Ryland, clearly this would be from an energy and enthusiasm standpoint, a big blow for the Thunder if this is a serious injury injury what was your reaction when you heard the news it was just tough because like you said the the excitement for this season the buzz about this team was back again in Oklahoma City it it was it was finally back in the sense of it doesn't matter what the record is you have enough really fun players now between Josh Giddy, Shea Goodis Alexander, Chet Holmgren even Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara and Usman Jang the two other lottery picks you had enough very fun players that regardless of record you wanted to watch this team night in and night out and the big bulk of that was adding Chet Holmgren, and now it might be taken away for an extended period of time, even the whole year. And so that was a huge blow. But the biggest thing was just the the shock factor of ligament damage versus when that video first came out from the crossover, it looked like a rolled ankle. It looked like a sprained ankle that he'd be over in a couple of days and training camp was still a month away. And we were still excited about the possibilities of him being healthy for that, that home opener in his home state on October 19th. And now that certainly is in jeopardy. Yeah, and if there's a team that is going to be okay saying, all right, well, this season doesn't really matter. We're not competing. Oklahoma City has shown that they are more than willing to do that. But anytime you have a seven-footer, a seven-footer with his frame especially, can he hold up? The injury piece of this was always part of the risk, part of the calculation with Chad Holmgren. So I know it's early. I know we don't know the severity of the injury. But let me ask it this way, not how worried are you, but how – how deeply inhaled is your breath being held right now as you as you wait to hear the future here? Because this could be the start of you know chronic injuries. We've seen this with seven footers before. We don't we don't know that that's going to happen, but there there's that worry. Yeah, you've got to hold your breath anytime a seven one guy has foot issues. I will say that being in Oklahoma City, we've seen this before with Kevin Durant, who broke yep. his foot and he was perfectly fine the very next year. And so it just goes to show that you know. We're not doctors, and so I can't really play one on here as much as I'd like to. So for me, the Please outcome. Don't. Thank you. Yeah, the out the outcome for me is pretty simple. He's either going to never get hurt again, and I'm going to act like he's fantastic, or he's going to get hurt again. I'm going to say, oh, it was all because of this one injury way back in his rookie year. That's just kind of the way that the cookie crumbles on these sort of things from our perspective uh, in the media. But yeah, you have to be concerned. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. And it's not the concern that people had pre drafted about a skinny frame or whatever. It's just that if foot problems can linger no matter how big, small you are. If you're seven one, they can linger. No matter if you look like Shaq or look like Chet, it's it's gonna it's gonna be something that you have to keep an eye on and really, really nurse and make sure before you put him back out there that he is 100 percent healthy. Stay up to date on the Oklahoma City Thunder by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and the Locked On Thunder podcasts on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. And thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, the Raiders are being completely overlooked as a potential playoff team. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's great joys. I had one today, and I said that yesterday because I had one yesterday too. I have them essentially every day now because I'm restocked up because this new cookie dough chunk puff flavor is unbelievable. 160 calories. 15 grams of protein covered in 100% chocolate with the cookie dough chunk puffs. The flavor, unbelievable. The macros, 
even more unbelievable when you consider the flavor, the marshmallow is infused with protein. Come on. This is, this is like S Star Wars stuff. Unbelievable what they're able to do. Go get some for yourself. Go to built.com and use the promo code locked on 15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code locked on 15. A time Pro Bowl tackle Tyron Smith could be out multiple months with a hamstring injury, according to a report from ESPN's Todd Archer and Adam Schefter. He went down in practice and appeared to be in significant pain immediately on Wednesday. More tests will be run today. This is a Cowboys offensive line already breaking in a new group with the addition of rookie Tyler Smith and the departures of Connor Williams and Lyle Collins, a potential massive blow in what is being described as Super Bowl or bust in Dallas. Cowboys wide receiver Michael Gallup had surgery to repair a torn ACL in February and has already said he will not be ready for the opener on September 11th. Do not tell Jerry Jones that. Gallup will not open the season on the physically unable to perform list as some may have thought. Jones said, we just don't want to do anything that would put him in some kind of category that would limit us from getting him in the first game. Gallup is currently on the active physically unable to perform list. And if the Cowboys move him to reserve PUP at the final cuts, he would be forced to miss at least the first four games. Speaking of ACL injuries, the New York Giants lost wide receiver Colin Johnson for the season Wednesday to a torn ACL. The six foot six, 220 pound receiver formerly out of the University of Texas had been getting first team reps in recent weeks with Kadarius Tony and Sterling Shepard among those on the sideline with injury. Coach Brian Dayball had noted early in the week that Johnson was making a strong impression. He started Sunday's preseason win over the Bengals and had three receptions for 41 yards. The L.A. Lakers made a trade with the Utah Jazz. No, not for Donovan Mitchell, for Patrick Beverly. This, according to Adrian Wojnarowski. The deal is for Taylor Horton Tucker, who the Lakers reportedly refused to include in a deal for Kyle Lowry last year. The Jazz got the incorrigible Pat Bev as part of the Rudy Gobert mega deal. The Jazz still reportedly in negotiations with the New York Knicks in a Donovan Mitchell deal. And the Lakers, are they in the market with Russell Westbrook? We'll see. Linebacker Shaquem Griffin announced his retirement from the NFL on Wednesday, writing for the Players' Tribune that he's looking forward to helping others as part of the NFL Legends community. Griffin, who had his left hand amputated at age four because of amniotic band syndrome, a congenital condition, became the first player with one hand to be drafted in the NFL's modern era when the Seattle Seahawks took him in the fifth round in 2018. It united him with his twin brother, Shaquille, then the Seahawks starting left corner. He appeared in 46 games with the Seahawks in three seasons and had nine tackles, three quarterback hits, and a sack. Griffin also had a sack of Aaron Rodgers in the divisional round of the 2019 season. Truly an inspirational story. And the Seattle Mariners seem to be blowing it lately. Opportunity continues to slip through the fingers of the Seattle Mariners. This is Tiny Gonzalez, host of the Locked On Mariners podcast here. Mariners fall by a score of 3-1 to one to the Washington Nationals on Wednesday afternoon, splitting a two-game set with the worst team in professional baseball. And the Mariners are now 2-3 and three against the two worst teams in professional baseball, the Oakland A's and the Washington Nationals, over their last five. That's just not going to get it done when you're in the middle of a wild card race. The Rays keep on winning. The Jays keep on winning. The Orioles are hanging around. The Twins are hanging around. The White Sox are hanging around. If the Mariners continue to not be able to capitalize on grand opportunities to gain ground or at the very least stay in the mix, they're going to quickly fall back to the pack. We are going to see this amazing chance to finally end this 20-year playoff drought that they have set up for themselves evaporate in an instant if they do not figure things out soon. They have to be able to beat teams like the Washington Nationals and the Oakland A's, and they have not been able to get that done over the last week worth of games. This offense is the biggest culprit. Julio Rodriguez hit a solo home run late in this game to tie things up at one apiece, and that was it from the Mariners against one of the worst pitching staffs in all of baseball. Led by Anibal Sanchez, who entered this game sporting an ERA north of six. That's inexcusable. You have to be better if you want to be a playoff team. 
We're going to be talking more about this game on the Locked On Mariners post-game show. Be sure to join us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you then. Peace. The Las Vegas Raiders. You remember them. They made the playoffs last year. Or maybe you don't remember that they did that because coming into the 2022 season, I don't hear a lot of people talking about the Las Vegas Raiders, even though they added some guy named Devontae Adams. I'm pretty familiar with his work. They added a guy named Chandler Jones. I think he's got a couple of sacks over the course of his career. And yet, I don't know, everyone wants to talk about Russell Wilson, and I get it. But the Las Vegas Raiders are a playoff team with a good quarterback. They just added dynamic playmaking on offense and defense. And your boy Q from Locked On Raiders does not know why they are not getting more love. Or maybe he does, but he joins me now. And Q, uh, why should why should the Raiders be taken seriously as a playoff team this year? Well, I mean, everything you just said, they made the playoffs last season with all the adversity that they had to deal with. I mean, what team loses their head coach, loses one of their really good wide receivers, uh, has a special teams coach, all of a sudden become the head coach. He's never been a head coach before. I mean, just all the adversity. They have to cut a guy because he's being an Internet thug. I mean, there's all kind of uh, issues that the Raiders dealt with last season, and they still found a way to win 10 games and make it to the playoffs in dramatic fashion by beating the Chargers in week 18. Uh, one of the best games, I think, of the season. It was just uh, a lot of dramatics. So, yeah, I mean, they just got better. That's all they did. And, oh, by the way, they have a play caller in Josh McDaniels, who's now the head coach, who's one of the better play callers across the NFL. So, yeah, they have a lot going for them. The only downfall, I guess you would say, if you look at them, is they play in the AFC West, which is going to be the toughest division in football. But, I mean, hey, if you're you're not built to beat them, then then what do you you know what are you in it for? So uh, I think the challenge is gonna be great every week. But yeah, they're a team that definitely should be reckoned with, or needs to be reckoned with, and needs to be understood by the rest of the league that they're gonna be a force. Yeah, and it, it should be noted that the the Raiders were one score uh, of the Bengals at the end. There, that was a, that was a twenty six nineteen game in the postseason. The Bengals were were walking a tightrope edge. They very easily could have flipped that game and and been one and done versus going to the Super Bowl. You mentioned Josh McDaniels. I'm fascinated by this because he it had been a long time since he has had the kind of offensive weaponry that the Raiders have. I think you can make the case that this is the best skill group in football or at least the best pass-catching group in football. What do you expect to see differently? Because this is not a West Coast disciple in the John Gruden style that's going to bring to this offense to maximize these guys. Well, you know, the thing about it, what I've seen so far in training camp every day as training camp just got wrapped up, but what I've been able to see is the attention to detail. That's really my biggest takeaway. It's not just the X's and O's and, oh, this is what this, this player is going to do and Derek's going to throw this and Devontae's going to do this. It's the attention to detail. It's the stupid thing that we hate to hear. Just do your job. You know, it's like everyone hates to hear that, but it's so true. If you just go out there and execute the way you're supposed to, good things will happen. And I'll tell you what it's a cliche I've, because it's true. Right, exactly. But what I've seen from this team has been ridiculous. It's just the fact that they're able to go out there and have the attention to detail. The way he coaches is not do it this way because I told you to. It's do it this way, and this is why. And I think the why is why players understand it. Okay. I get it. This is why I'm going to run this route this way. And this is why I'm going to be in this certain spot at the same time. I'll tell you, and, and for a guy that's been covering the Raiders for a very long time, to see a team play an entire game and have two penalties for 10 yards, that's that's massive. I mean, that is massive. They are teaching, it, and Josh McDaniels is coaching this team not to beat itself, right? Not to have the false starts on on you know fourth and one or or jump off sides on third and three or hit a quarterback late out of bounds. All things they did last year, right? I'm just I'm just I'm going off what I know, right? I mean, this is things that they do on the routine, on the regular. He's not he's not allowing them to do that. He's coaching that out of them, teaching them not to do that. That's half the battle. If you just go play your game and if you go back and look at Patriot games, half the time they allow the other team to beat themselves, right? Instead of just them beating them, they allow other teams to beat themselves. So I think that that's going to be the biggest thing that Raider fans are going to get excited about is they're not going to see those dumb penalties and just stupid shooting yourself in the foot mistakes that the Raiders are so accustomed to making. And with all that being said, they did a lot of that last year, and they still won 10 games and made it to the playoffs. Stay up to date on the Las Vegas Raiders by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and the Locked On Raiders podcast on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Coming up, the Miami Hurricanes can win the ACC if they do this. We will look at what coming up next. 
Here's what to look for on Bet Online, your number one spot for all of your gambling needs. Let's look at the updated odds to win the NBA title with KD coming back to Brooklyn. The Celts, five to one. The Bucks, six to one. The defending champion Warriors at seven to one. The Nets, right behind them at plus 750. The Clippers, right there with them, plus 750. The Suns at 10 to one. And the Lakers, inexplicably, at 14 to one. Bet Online, where the game starts. The Clemson Tigers are the class of the ACC. We all know this. Right behind them this year, the Miami Hurricanes. Alex Dono covers the Hurricanes daily on Locked on Canes, and he lays out how Miami can win the ACC. If they find consistency at wide receiver, I honestly think that could be the difference, guys. I think that could be the difference between winning the conference or maybe barely winning the Coastal or not even winning the Coastal. If they can find consistency at wide receiver, I think that could be Miami's Achilles heel. If they can get the Hurricanes at least two reliable, legitimate targets, like you know, last year they had Rambo and Harley. If the Hurricanes can see at least two legitimate wide receiver targets emerge and a good supporting cast who can make some plays, then I think the Hurricanes can score points at will. I expect at least one of Miami's three tight ends to be a reliable playmaker this year, if not more than one. Uh, at the wide receiver core, I do expect the starting slot receiver, Xavier Restrepo, because he's been the most consistent, reliable guy throughout fall camp. I think he's going to be reliable throughout the year. So we need at least one other to step up on the outside and have a big year out of that wide receiver core. OK, um, you know, you look at some of the candidates for that. Rashard Smith is having a really good fall camp. Mario Cristobal talked about Brashard popping throughout the last couple of weeks in camp. And in the case of Brashard Smith, technically he plays the same exact position as Xavier Restrepo. So they need to, they need to find a way to get both of those guys on the field at once. Okay. Uh, Jacoby George is definitely capable, physically capable of being that guy to step up. Keyshawn Smith, Made some big plays last year. Frank Ladson, who transferred in from Clemson. It seems like he's been a little bit inconsistent, but you know, this is a guy with ton of experience, championship experience, having played with the Clemson Tigers. Um, so yeah, we really need I'm expecting at least one tight end to step up. I'm expecting Xavier Restrepo to step up. I believe the Hurricanes need another consistent big time target in order to truly contend for the ACC. Because yeah, if Tyler Van Dyke is making big-time, big-league NFL-style throws, and these guys are dropping passes consistently. That's going to hurt Miami's chances to surpass the likes of Clemson or the likes of North Carolina State to win the conference. Miami winning the ACC would be awesome for college football. It would be great to see Miami back in the mix. But, I mean, Clemson is still Clemson. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on Clemson. And finally... Sports can be inspiring. Twin shortstop Carlos Correa, former Astro, and a founder of the Correa Family Foundation spearheaded an effort to build a new home for a survivor of the tragic Uvalde shootings. Maya Zamora was the last survivor to be released from the hospital from the shootings. While she was in the hospital, she found out she lived just down the street from the shooter's house and found it impossible to return home after her release. The Correa Family Foundation partners with multiple current Astros players got together enough money to build Zamora and her family a brand new home far away from their old neighborhood. This was announced when Zamora threw out the ceremonial first pitch of the Astros Twins game on Tuesday night. A terrible tragedy and good to see people who can help doing what they can to help. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's Locked On podcast and make them your second listen. Coming up tomorrow, which team will be vying for the top pick in the NFL draft next year? So at least until tomorrow, it's the Bears. Stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today. 